Good morning, Tuesday Tidbitters. <laughs> Is that our new um, thing? That could be it. Um, we thought we would do, because we had a few requests after our last Tuesday Tidbits about the pillows, we had a few requests on taking it just a little bit of a step further. So we thought we would do a real quick one for you. It's not going to be lengthy, but we wanted to give you a couple um, addendums to pillows because you can do ruffles, you can do flanges, and they're not hard to do. They really aren't. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to do a mock double ruffle. So this is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to consider our mock double ruffle. I mean, in the old days, you actually put two ruffles on. No, this is a mock one. So what you have is a wide piece and a narrow piece. You fold them together and you press them nice and good. Um, right, wrong sides together. I'm sorry, wrong sides together. And then you just treat this as a ruffle. So this one you'll just gather up and you'll put it on like I'm going to show you. Is there like a formula for widths of Well, strips? it depends on how wide you like your ruffles. I tend to go like four and a half for a regular ruffle. When you would double, you probably want to go a little bit more. But what I just did is I took two pieces and I folded them till it looked like I wanted them. And then I just cut it off at, e at the bottom even. That's your um, artistic license, all right? I just knew that question was coming, so. Okay, well, there you go. I answered it. Pre kind of, sort of, Preemptive. Somewhat. Yeah. Okay, as far as ruffling. Now, this, this is my four and a half inch standard ruffle. And what I did, there's, I don't think that there's any way to make an equation of exactly how much fabric you need to go around a pillow. You want to go at least double. But I like to have the ish factor in there. So... I usually start with at least two strips and kind of get an idea and then make a note in your um, sewing room so if you ever do it again, you'll know what you had to do. So we need to gather these. Now, back in the olden days, what you did is you ran two lines of a basting stitch and you gather, gather, gathered them up and nine times out of ten, it broke halfway through and you started over again, you gather, gather, gathered and it broke. And you raveled so, the edge till it was... Yeah, till it, <laughs> till it was, became a three and a half inch <laughs> ruffle. So what we're going to do, there's a couple different ways I want to show you. Now, the first way, a lot of machines have, usually as an add-on foot, an actual ruffling foot. Even the old featherweights had them. Now, I, they're a big clunky thing. I never actually tried one, but I know they exist. And lots of times they were standard. But what I'm going to show you is on my machine, I have a, even though it doesn't say it, I have a Bernina, and there is an actual ruffling for, or a gathering foot for it. But a lot of other machines have it too, and if it's not standard, find your dealer and see if they have one. Because the nice thing about this foot, let me show you, and it takes a little bit of fussing just to kind of get what you want. But what you end up doing on this is you crank your tension up pretty high, and then you want a fairly long stitch. So I put mine, I'm going to start here. We're going to put it all the way up as far as basting. As long as it'll go. As long as it'll go. And then I'm just going to put, run the edge of my foot right along there. And you let it do its thing. You just kind of guide it. But you see how that's gathering it, gathering it up all by itself? So you have a perfect little ruffle. Now if you want it a heavier ruffle, you can lengthen your fuller. stitch if Not you want a fuller, fuller yeah fuller ruffle you can do it a little differently but then again if you can get them a ruffler from your dealer ask them yeah then. ask them but you see how perfect that is it's so easy and it's done see how that that became much much um more ruffly fuller. than the other fuller than the other part yeah there's a good word <laughs> fuller's a good word okay so that's how you can ruffle your um one way to ruffle your ruffle. Let's put it that way. So I'm gonna take this out and then I'm gonna start from the other end. If you do not have a machine that has a ruffling foot, what we're going to do is put on a, your walking foot. Can you use a walking foot? Yeah, you can. You can use your, well, not a lot of people have this, the foot that has the gouge underneath it. Mm. So walking foot, cause you gotta do go over the string. Let me get that out of the way. So. First of all, make sure you put your settings back to what they were supposed to be. <laughs> so we're going to go back. But what I want to do now is I'm going to put on a nice wide zigzag. So it's just going to be a nice wide zigzag. I'm going to take a piece of, this is pearl cotton. If you've got kite string, what are, oh no, it might take me 10 minutes to find the beginning. Nope, there we go. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lay this string on like a so. Make sure there's some sticking off the edge. Get on there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to zigzag 
right over that string, making sure, and I can make this a little bit longer, making sure that I don't catch the string in my stitching. Let me go a little farther here. Another thing I recommend you do too, is when you're doing something like this, try to match your thread with the ruffle so that when you put it on, if a little bit of thread shows, you're not gonna notice it much. Like I wouldn't use black on this. This one isn't gonna show too bad, but a green would have been a better choice. So I'm just gonna keep going like this, keep going. Okay. Talk amongst yourselves for just a minute. But you see how quickly this goes. And so, this one you can gauge a little bit better if you're having like odd sized pillows or. Right, because that's the other thing too. You know, you can have round pillows, you can have rectangular pillows. There's all sorts of different ones. And this I'm just. Is, this go is ahead. probably the easiest method to do without any purchasing you don't have any the extra yeah. feet for your machine, which this is like easy peasy. Moan, Terry, so fast. I'm sewing fast, but I don't want um, I don't want to catch it. <laughs> you don't it. want to catch. Yeah, if you catch that thread, you'll find out about that one too sweet. <laughs> yeah, and you just basically got to start all over again. I better not have just caught that. No, I didn't. Marty's distracting me. Well, you said talk amongst yourself. I know. I'm not singing for that. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm almost getting to the point where I'm to my other part of my ruffle. Sorry, we kids. song and dance for a little while. I wasn't going to make 14 different pieces of ruffling today. Okay, so we're going to stop there. So then what we do... Don't cut your string off don't short. Cut your, well, you can at this point. It doesn't really matter. But what I would do at this point, let's say, for example, that this is my ruffle. So I'm going to just say, this is the end of my ruffle. And I am going to cut my string just to get it out of the way. Okay. Now, yeah, but you left yourself a tail, right? I left myself a tail, but it, yeah, you want a tail on each end. So what we're going to do now is, if I was pretty confident that this is going to be the size I need, I would take this. This is going to look stupid, but bear with me for a minute. This is how, remember we talked about flat felt seams last time? Basically, that's what we're going to do. Hang on just a second. This way you can finish the end. Oops, let me get this back to a straight stitch. Oops. So that was just a little skinny eighth inch seam. Yep. And now I'm just gonna do a little bit wider one. I mean, you could have folded it out flat, made a seam, done it. You could have if you wanted too. to, but this is a pillow piece. Whoops, there we go. This is not a perfect job, but it'll get you, get an idea of what you want. And then I would take this and I would flatten it. And then I would stitch over that, stitch that down flat. Come on. Sorry. Okay, so now I have my ring of my pillowcase. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark quarters. So I would put a little bit of a, you can put a pin, you can do a snip. But these are my north, south, east, and wests. Just don't cut through your screen. Just don't cut where the, um, the string is. The string is right. If you've got flat flower pins, they're nice because they're a little bit longer, but they're not necessary. You can use whatever you've got. So now what I'm going to do is take, I like to put the, the seam in the center. So you're going to put a pin in, lining up all of your raw edges. And then there's my center here. So you're getting the idea, right? Yeah, and don't put a twist in it. <laughs> yeah, unless you want a really funky ruffle. And again, this goes back to, you know, depending on what size pillow that you've got, kind of do figuring, 
you know, if you have a 16 inch pillow, so that means you've got 64 inches around the whole pillow. So if you double that, that's about 120. Mm -hmm. So that's roughly about the equivalent of a little over three strips. Right. So for a pillow like that, I would go three and a half strips. Well, and actually, if you really want to be easy peasy, go four strips and wherever one, wherever one of those seams is, that is your center of your side. Right. Right. Okay. So we've got it pinned and this is not going to be a real, real, real big ruffle. So now I'm going to take my cord that I've got here and I'm just going to gather this up so that and it's really not a big ruffle. I told you, I remember I said that it wasn't going to be, but we're going to pretend. All right. We're going to just pretend here. This is you, why you really want that almost double. At least double. So you're just going to pull this cord till it gathers it up as much as you want, and then get it nice and even. And then you're going to pin this. And pin it good, kids, because if, if not, it's going to um, flop around on you and everything will go. Yeah, because that raw edge is kind of wiggly wiggly. Yeah. So you're just going to do that. When you get to the corners, you just kind of bend it around. And hang on, I want to show you one other thing here. So when you bend this around, and I'm using an already ruffled pillow, so that's I'm cheating a little <laughs> bit. I shouldn't admit that, but I am. So if you were doing this, you would actually be putting it on the right side of the yes. pillow. We're pretending that this is the right side of the pillow. So we're just going to mush that around that corner, put another pin in here. And then you're going to take this, all this mess in here, the little miter, pull it up here, get it out of the way so it doesn't get it caught, flat. and put another pin in here just to keep it, prevent it from getting where it's not supposed to be. All right? And then you just keep doing the same thing. You just keep gathering, pulling it, gathering it, pin it, pin it really good. So once you do that, then remember we talked about our, um, I would base this on at this point using a nice narrow seam, base the whole thing around with a big long stitch. You can get rid of your cord at that point if you want. And then you're gonna put your back to your front. You remember your envelope closing like we talked about last time. Put that on and then when you turn it out, you have a perfectly ruffled pillow. And it's so easy to do and people I think are afraid of it. But, so that's how you put a ruffle on, kind of, sort of. All right, hopefully you got all that. If not, ask a question, all right? The other thing I want to show you is how to do a flange pillow. Okay, remember we did this last time? We showed you that this was the, the little block I found and I put my closure, my um, envelope back on, like we talked about. And then instead of edge stitching it around here, this pillow form is a little bit big. Mm. Instead of edge stitching it, what I did is I came in after I, before I put the pillow form in obviously, after I had it nice and flat, I came in here and I quilted in the ditch around here and that, that left this flangey looking thing. So now if you look at it, this is, I think the flange is a little more contemporary look. For my, a little more streamlined. Yeah, for my cardinals, if you don't want to go that ruffle but you want something out there, that is how you do the flange. So I think that that's, so you have a regular traditional ruffle, which is what that's going to be, which actually, Hang on one second. You all got that. And when you pull these out, pull those corners out nice and tight. Oh, the corners. Sometimes you want to make a little bit of a curve. Sometimes you pivot. Whatever works for you. I don't think that there's any law about it. So once you've got it all on there... Just check it carefully when you turn it right side out, because if you've missed a spot, you can just turn it right, you know, the other way back out and blowout. catch it again. But that will, that's how your ruffle will look. So you have your traditional ruffle. This will be your, if you think about it, your double ruffle. If you want the mock double ruffle, this is your flange, and that's how you do pillows. I'm going to show you two other things real quick, and then we'll let you go. These are two new, they're not anything to do with pillows, but these are two new little quick little... No, just so um, you know, we're not slacking. Yeah, we're not slacking. This is a little 
ornament or hanger of some sort, whatever you would like to do for the gnome lovers in the crowd. This is done with wool, hand stitched, fun to do. This is like a couple evenings project, but we thought it was real cute. This is another one, and I forgot I should have grabbed the hanger, but there's an actual hanger that um, that really looks nice on this one. But um, this is another little couple evenings worth of work. This one is called Snowy Silent Night. So there's a couple new kits we're going to be doing, and these are $22, $22 for each of the kits. These are both wool. You can do them by machine. We choose to do them by hand, but... Um, that's your choice. So I think that that's all we needed to do this week. If you have any questions, hopefully we've got a lot of the bugs worked out of the website with our videos. Last week, I know was abysmal. You all had to learn how to lip read, which Marty and I probably should have been a little better at, but we weren't. So hopefully this time there won't be a uh, problem and enjoy. Okay, bye.